Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor, and I'm going to be connecting it up to a Raspberry Pi computer. And if you find this video helpful, I'll put a link in the description of this sensor on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So this is a high let go sensor. I got two of them in the package, and these are made by many different companies. I think they're pretty much all the same sensor. So here's the sensor itself. It came with two of these. It came with this cable here, and the cable has a gray, white, and black wire on it. And I have the gray hooked up to the positive, the black hooked up to the negative, and the white hooked up to out, which would be for the data. Oh, and these do say they're static sensitive, so I guess maybe don't work on these in a really dry environment or where you have static. And I'm just sharing my experience here. I'm not an expert on this sensor by any means. So here's the Raspberry Pi I have it connected up to. This is a Raspberry Pi B Plus model, so this is a very old model, but it still works with this sensor. I have the positive hooked up to this first pin here, the negative hooked up to the third pin, and the data or out connected to the second row, it's the fourth pin over. So I connected this up, I've booted up into Raspberry Pi OS. Now I'm going to get on my Mac here and I'll connect into the Raspberry Pi so we can pull some temperature and humidity data from this sensor. So I pulled out this diagram of the pins and I have the positive hooked up to this first pin, negative up to this third, and then the out connected to the one that says four here. It might be kind of hard to read, but it's this fourth one over on the second row. Okay, so I tried to use a tutorial on Adafruit and I couldn't get that working, but I have this one on Pi My Life up and I think I've had this one working in the past. So we'll walk through it. So I'm going to scroll down here until we get to the code portion. So they're using a breadboard to connect it up here, and they have a pull-up resistor, but this has the resistor built into it, this one that I already bought. And like I said, I'm not an expert on this, but this one is mounted on a circuit board, and I think that's how you can tell if it has a pull-up resistor. Because if I look on the back of the circuit board, I see resistors on there. So if you don't have a pull-up resistor, you'll want to create a circuit similar to what they have in the tutorial here. And I'll put a link in the description of this link so you can find this. So first thing it wants us to do is to run sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade. And I've run those two commands already. Next it wants us to install python-dev and python-pip, python3 that is. So I'll copy this over, paste that into my terminal. Okay, we're good to go there. Now we want to upgrade these packages. So I'll copy this next line. This is going to upgrade pip, setup tools, and wheel. Okay, that's finished. Now we want to install this Adafruit DHT. So I'll copy that line, I'll paste it in. So it looks like this also supports DHT11 and AM2302. Okay, that's finished. So now we're going to create a Python script. So I'll copy in this next line. It's going to create a script called humidity.py. So it will tell the different lines of this, and you can read through this to kind of learn how it works. But if you scroll down a bit, you can find the whole code. So I'll just copy this here. I'll paste that into my text editor. I'll hit Control O to save, Control X to exit. So now we can type in Python three, and then the name of our script. There we go. So one criticism of this sensor is that it's kind of slow. So it's putting the temperature out here. So I'm going to breathe on this and we'll watch the temperature change. Okay, there you can see a change. So that was kind of boring to watch. I didn't speed up the video. I wanted you to see how long this took to actually update, but it took quite a while. And I was breathing on it up close. So you can see the humidity went to 99 and the temperature went to 25. Now I'm not breathing on it right now. I'm talking to you, obviously, but you can see the humidity is still up at 99.9%. .9%, and then the temperature is still at 25%. And I've noticed this, or 25 degrees. And I've noticed this before when I was testing this, that it seemed to take a while before this would even back out. And because in theory, it should go back down to 20.5 degrees Celsius and 61.9 degrees humidity. Because I'm in the basement of my house, it's very steady temperature and humidity down here. Okay, so it's starting to go back down, but the humidity is still up. Maybe when I breathed on it, it got some condensation on the sensor. 
that could be it I'm not real sure so if you need like real-time humidity and temperature then this is probably not your best option if you want to do like long-term logging of temperature and humidity this could be a good option for you you could plug this in you could write the temperature and humidity to a file say once a minute or something, and then over time you could track that to see if it's going up or down. But I don't know that this would be good for say turning on a humidifier. I mean, maybe it would work, I don't know. But I would think that there might be a sensor that might be a little bit faster at doing that. And plus I was breathing on it, so that was a huge change in humidity. That's not really a subtle change in humidity. So it might work for some of those applications. You can see it's starting to go back down now, but it's definitely not fast. I mean, you're not going to use this to control a heat circuit of any sort. And I'll hit return a couple times. It seems kind of random when it pops up the temperature and humidity. So I'll hit control C to get out of there. So I'm not a Python expert here, but I'm sure this script could be modified pretty easily to add a date and timestamp to it. Let's see if this has anything else on this web page. So this talks about doing a logger here. I guess we can do this one too. So I'll type nano space humidity underscore logger dot py. I'll copy in this script. So I had this plugged into GPIO4, but if it wasn't, you would want to change that here where it says DHT underscore pin. And that's the same on the previous script I did too. Let me go back into that. So I'll type control O to save, control X to exit. In the same script here, where it says DHT pin, you want to change that to the GPIO pin you're using. Now, it's pin 7 on the Raspberry Pi board, but it's GPIO pin 4, and that's on that chart I showed earlier. So now I can type Python 3 and humidity underscore logger dot py. And this should log here. So I'm going to open up a new tab, and I'll log into this on a different terminal. If I type ls here, we'll see this humidity.csv. So I can type tail space dash f space humidity.csv. What tail f will do is it will read the last 10 lines of this file, and then if any are added, it will show those two, will add those on. So you can use this to monitor logs or monitor this temp file here. So it looks like nothing has been written to it yet. So it looks like it should look like this eventually. Let's see if it's writing yet. So it doesn't seem to be writing anything to the file. Let me try running the other script again. Okay, yeah, that seems to be working. Let's try this again. Okay, so it looks like there's something in there. So I'll type tail space dash f and then humidity.csv. See if we get anything to come up here. We have three lines. I'm not sure why that's not adding more lines. Let's see if I quit this. It added a line when I quit it. Hmm. So I'm not sure why that's not working. So my thoughts on this. I think it could be useful for some projects when you want to do some long-term monitoring, but there could be some better options. So if there's a temperature sensor you like better than this on the Raspberry Pi, drop a comment below. I'm interested in checking it out. I have used the one, it's the DST something 80. I forget the exact model name of it. And it just does temperature, not humidity. And it works okay, but sometimes it drops out, so it's not perfect either. But it seems to be a little bit faster than this one. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.